the, the Durban Film Festival, Peter Machen, and here with us in studio, the CEO of the FPB, Yuliswa Makaisi. It's good to have you, Yuliswa. Thank you very much for thank being here. Thank you, Thank you for inviting it's us. It's an absolute pleasure. And Peter, very good morning to you. I know that you're in our Durban studios. Yes. Uh, hi, Leanne. How are you doing? Good. Very well, thank you. Yuliswa, let's begin with you. How have you been dealing with the appeal of uh, Good Report to be screened at the Durban Film Festival? Well, I think that firstly, and uh, let me just outline the process briefly for you, that we, the festival submitted about 101 films for us, which we had to look at, and we looked at the synopsis, and we exempted about... Uh, we exempted all the films except the seven because of the synopsis of the films and then we requested copies of the films so that we can uh, classify them, go through the process of classification. And Of Good Report is one, of the fil is one film that um, we, we refused classification and we communicated to the organizers. And the organizers did indicate that their intention to appeal. Now, in terms of our legislation, we must have an appeal within 30 days, and there's a, quite a long process we have to uh, uh, involve in, in terms of the appeal, including booking the, the members of the appeals tribunal, because we need to have at least five members of the appeals tribunal, which is four plus one, that is four members plus the chairperson of the appeals tribunal itself. So we are in the process of doing that. We are hoping that at least by Saturday this weekend, yeah. we will be having an appeals uh, uh, hearing that's going to take place. All right. Why did you classify it as child pornography <coughs> after hearing all of the explanations? Nations. Well, I mean, the, 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 the Film and Publication Board is a creature of statute, so we are guided by law. And law, which is the Film and Publication Act, is very clear on its definition of child pornography, which includes um, a depiction. Uh, any act that includes depiction, real or stimulated sexual performance uh, sec or involving uh, uh, people below the ages of, of 18. So, and indeed in the synopsis of the movie itself, the director is quite very clear in that synopsis that there is a sexual scene that is involving a 16-year-old. Even though the actress was 22? Well, it is a depiction and our, our, our act is very clear that in cases of depiction, if it is depicted, if an actress is depicting a younger person, it is still um, a, a child pornography because it is depiction in terms yeah. of the act. All right. Peter, you're hearing this in the Durban studio. Let's get your response from this. Um, I, I, I remember when this amendment was made, uh, w w w was made and I was deeply concerned at the time uh, because it, it does... Um, it, it actually includes a huge amount of art and, and kind of cultural production that has taken place um, not just since the birth of cinema, but since the birth, but the birth of artistic production on this planet. Um, Lolita, for example, um, Vladimir Nabokov's um, beautiful and you know, amazing novel that uh, deals with exactly the same subject matter in far more explicit ways. And I know that the act is not just about film, but about most modes of exp creative expression, including writing. So, in fact, um, the Film Publication Board uh, need to kind of reclassify Lolita, they need to reclassify Romeo and Juliet, in which 14 and a 16-year-old are sleeping with each other. They need to go back and see how they could possibly have allowed Yizo Yizo to screen. Um, they need to look at all the stuff that is being screened on TV. Um, look, I understand that they are just following the letter of the law, but at the same time, um, there are many, many other films that have been passed since this legislation in which similar activities take place, and mm. all of those films have somehow been given classification. And that's what I find kind of strange. Yeah. Now, I, I understand that the, the Durban Film Festival doesn't actually submit all the films to be screened um, to the Film and Publications Board, but how, how did you select the seven that were sent through? Oh, Peter? myself? Yeah, sorry, Peter, this is to oh, you. No, I, the, um, no, no, um, the, the, that um, request was actually made by the Film Publication Board. Okay. Um, we send them our, our, our synopses, and then they, they sent us a list of films that they would like to see. They sent us a list of seven, including of Good Report, and um, the, uh, the Michael Winterbottom film, The Look of Love, which unfortunately we didn't have, an online, we didn't have a screener copy of. Um, we offered um, the Film Publication Board an online screener, but they don't have online, online screening facilities. Yeah. Um, Lisa, have you done anything to inform filmmakers about what is allowed and amendments to what can be legally screened? Yes, um, we have, Lee, and in fact, every film festival, we do go to the Deben Film Festival and other film festivals in the country, and we run workshops on our classification guidelines, on our legislation. Today, we are in Deben, my colleagues are in Deben, and I hope mm, they sure. will be in allowed fact, by the film organizers, and 
and other Can people who are having water? these concerns to actually engage with them on the classification guidelines because we do that. Peter has raised an important issue I need to clarify. The Film and Publication Board does not classify for television. So if you see content that's on television that um, you think um, requires a, a, some form of classification, you have to complain directly with the people who are responsible for television. It is structured such that our legislation, we don't cl classify for television, but we classify for cinema and for festivals and for home entertainment. Yeah. Just, just finally, how do you see your relationship going forward with the Durban Film Festival? Look, we think as FPB, what happened was unfortunate in Durban because surely the organizers could have called us to explain to those people and I think that they could have made a plan B regarding what they would show uh, in, in that day. But I mean, it, I think it was part of their own plan to do what they did. We are open and willing to engage with them. We're in Durban today and it is our job to engage with industry and educate more, them more about the realities of our own legislation. Mm. And I do think that if they want to raise issues that relate to the legislation, they are welcome to do so, so that those issues can be considered when a review of the legislation is being done. We can't change the legislation as FPP on our own. We right. are there to implement the legislation. All right, Yoliswa, thank you very much for talking to us. Peter, I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Finally, what are your words? Conclude for us. Um, first of all, um, I consult with Jamil, the filmmaker, um, about what we were going to do in opening night. The moment, uh, the moment I heard about the film, uh, about the situation, and it was actually his decision. Um, if I had screened, if the, if the festival had screened another film, I feel that we would both have been acquiescing to censorship and engaging in censorship ourselves. And um, I just think that this is a very important issue in South Africa, and that we really needed to bring it to uh, to, 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 to the attention of the world, in fact. All right. And the response has been remarkable. Peter, thank you very much for joining us as well. Uh, let's take a break.